Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we will be solving another Physics 7C practice problem regards to electric charges, fields, and forces. We'll work on arranging charges and their forces. Remember, if you find this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel and leave a like. Your support helps a lot and we really appreciate the feedback. Okay, here's the problem. Remember, it's a good idea to pause the video here and copy it down so you can follow along. The question reads, make an arrangement of four positive charges, such as the electric field at the center points to the right. Two of the charges have a magnitude of one coulomb, and the other two are two coulomb. The charges are positioned at the corners of a square as drawn below, and at the center, the distance to each is the same. Draw the electric field vectors due to each charge at the center, and briefly explain why the total electric field is to the right. Part two, Shown below are two charges, Q1 and Q2, of equal magnitude. Also show are two locations, A and B, with distances marked to each charge. Part A is, if Q1 is positive and Q2 is negative, in which location, A or B, would a positive charge feel a larger force? Part B is, if now Q1 and Q2 are both positive, would your answer for part A change? Okay, so here for part A, we have four charges pinned to the corners of a square. They're all gonna be positive. Two of them should be one coulomb, and two of them should be two coulomb. The first thing we wanna take note is, at the center, we definitely wanna get rid of the vertical components, which means we want fields that are pointing um, equal on each side. So that means we're gonna want one coulomb either on this side or on this side, and the two coulombs on this side or this side. We don't want them across from each other on the tops and bottoms because then the horizontal components will cancel. And I'll show more of that as we write these. So if we wanna make sure that our field is pointing to the right, which one of these charges has a bigger field in the first place? Well, for a positive charge, the field always points away from the charge. Okay, and something with the charge of two coulombs is gonna have twice the magnitude as a charge with one coulomb. So if we want the net force to be pointing to the right and not to the left, we're gonna want the bigger charges pointing in the right direction. Okay, when we're looking at the center of the square. So I'm gonna put the two coulomb charges on the left-hand side and the one coulomb charges on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna label the pink ones as the two coulomb. And here, since the field is pointing always away from the center of the charge, this one is gonna have a field like this, and this one is gonna have a field like this. Those are the two coulomb. The one coulomb are gonna have fields like this, half as big as the two coulomb. We see that the vertical components of these two charges cancel. One is going up, one is going down. So it has a net from the one coulomb to the left. From the two coulombs, once again, the vertical components cancel because they have the same vertical components of their fields, but in opposite directions. So it has a net to the right. But this net to the right, because the two coulombs are bigger, is bigger than the net to the left. So we still end up with a component after these two subtract from each other that is still to the right. So in the end, we want the two charges on the left that are two coulomb and the two charges on the right to be one coulomb so that when we cancel the components using vector addition, we end up with just a net field going to the right. So this is how we want to draw this. Okay, that's part one. Part two, we're dealing with a new picture and we're dealing with a Q1 and a Q2. For part A, we want to say Q1 is positive and Q2 is negative. Okay? And which one of these positions would a positive charge feel a greater force? So let's look at the equations we have. We know the force from an electric field 
is the test charge that we're looking at times the electric field that is generated by our charges that are already there, Q1 and Q2. So our test charge is going to be a positive charge. So let's take a look at the electric field generated at point A and at point B. So electric fields, if we just want the magnitude of an electric field, there's our constant K times our charge that we're looking at divided by the distance squared. So let's do point A first. So for point A, we have the magnitude of the electric field is K Q1 over D squared plus K Q2 over D squared. Okay? And that equals 2KQ over D squared. Okay? So we have Q1 and Q2 going to point A because their fields are pointing in the same direction. That's why they're both positive. The field going from to Q2 is points towards and the field going from Q1 points away. So they're going in the same direction. For EB, however, Q2 is pointing towards it still, but Q1 is now away. So their fields are going in opposite directions. So they're going to subtract from each other. So Q2 over D squared minus KQ1 over 3D squared, because it takes three distances squared. And this gives us 8Q, KQ over 9D squared. Okay, so if we look at how we measure the force, we just take the magnitude, we just take the electric field and multiply it by our test charge to get the magnitude of the force, or to get the force. So if we look at the magnitude, 2KQ two two is bigger than 8KQ over 9D squared. So 2KQ over D squared is bigger than 8KQ over 9D squared. And so when we multiply that by the test charge, it's going to have bigger than EB. So our bigger one is going to be, our greater force is when we're acting on A. So greater force is on A. Okay? And once again, we pick these directions, whether posit positive or negative, depending on which direction the field is going at that point. Okay? All right. So if now Q1 and Q2 are both positive, would your answer for part A change? If Q1 and Q2 are both positive, so for part B, we want to say Q1 equals Q2 equals positive. Does our answer change? Well, now if we look at the fields, at point A, both fields are going to be pointing inward, and they're both the same distance away. So our fields are going to cancel. So our force at A is just zero because there's no field at A. So now we have more strength at B because the force from Q1 and the field from Q1 is still going down, but also the field from Q2 is going down now. So those two add together, and the field is not zero at B. So our answer does change, and the force at B is now greater than the force at A because the force at A is now zero because the two fields cancel because the fields are going in opposite directions instead of the same direction which they were doing in part A. Okay, that was looking at forces from electric fields and the directions of electric fields. This is mostly just vector addition, so if you're struggling with vector addition, I recommend reviewing it. Okay, that's it. If this was helpful, please leave a like, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.